Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of the Soul Race Specialist. On the last episode, we finally started working on the raids grind, completing phase 1, getting all the stats and gear and miscellaneous stuff to actually start raiding. So I started testing the waters of raids last episode and it turned out pretty good. So far so good, we haven't died yet at all, so that's the most important thing. And we managed to snag a raids item already on the second KC, so we're off to a really good start. Ancestral hat, not like the most useful thing ever, but it's really good morale booster though. I already have an item, so 1 out of 12, I guess. All the series information and rules can be found in the description of this video, so make sure to check it out if you have not. It'll only take you about a minute. 5%, 4%, uh, is this good? Nice, they're right back to back. Nah, there's no way. That would, that would have not happened. Oh, fun raid though. 32k points. Oh, wow, that's a lot of herbs, jeez. Okay, no more need for farming, I guess. Because I'm just going to get a lot of herbs from raids anyways. I actually have enough herbs just from farm runs to get to 81 right now with all these herbs. So super energies, eventos, some prayer pods based on the Kalki stores is 400k experience which will get me all the way to 81 which is exactly what I need to make brews. So yeah, I need brews for sure because can't really do raids without it. So Alright, just hit 79 herb alert. You see all this swamp tar that I've collected from Zora? 1400 kills worth of swamp tar. So 54,000. That's enough to make like 4,000 herb tars. So I got some Taramans and some Highlanders. So we're gonna get some quick experience out of this. Alright. Just popped out that fresh recorder here for that 80 herb blur. Alright, let me load this and see if it's something that like... Oh boy, it's Vespula. Alright, well, luckily for me, I do have a bunch of, uh, prey enhances and stuff, so I'm gonna use magic to kill Fispila. So, that's gonna be interesting. Alright, I'm ready. Fispila is one of the harder bosses in raids because it is a boss where you have to kill it quickly, or else you're gonna face dire consequences, similar to Fonsa. So, it is a battle between the grubs hatching and the portal dying, because if the grub hatches, that means it regenerates the portal by a large percentage. So you have to kill it or you should try to kill it before the soldiers hatch. With my current setup, the best chance I have to be in Fispila is through the use of magic using the Toxic Trident on long range and also with the help of overloads and prayer enhance from something like Tecton and Mutadal. So the overloads are super important because Trident's max hit is dependent on your magic level. The overload gives me a plus 21 magic boost, which means that's an extra 7 max hits. And not to mention, I get an extra 21 magic levels worth of accuracy. And another thing is to prayer enhance. So the prayer enhance is what will allow me to constantly attack the portal without me dying. Because the method that I'm using is called the redemption method. There's two variations. There's redemption method with prayer enhances or redemption method using your own prayer potions or restore potions. So what the prayer enhance does is every few seconds it'll give me one prayer point. So whenever I go to the portal to attack it, I make sure I turn redemption on with that one prayer point. And the boss will at some point sting me right below 10 HP and that will trigger the redemption and it'll bring me back to full HP and then I simply wait for the prayer in hands to give me one prayer point back and then I start the process over and over again by doing that consistently redemptioning with that one prayer point I will eventually be able to kill the portal without me actually dying come on one more hit no that's not enough I need one more one more hit maybe Yes, that was nice. Yeah, it works, it works. Not too bad. It definitely did a solid job. Ooh, dang it, this is a really interesting raid. Hella points here. This is a s extended raid. Looks really fun though. Some challenges here for this raid is making it all the way past the uh, mining room, skeleton room, agility room, shaman room, and then surviving meter down so I can get supplies for overloads and if I can pass that challenge without taking too much damage I don't know about that probably not chances are low then I might not have to prep 
So I actually managed to make it all the way to the vanguards. That means going through the mutadal, going through the agility room with one brew left. And that's the brew that I got from mutadal. So that is challenging. If I could finish vanguards with that one brew, I can actually join the brews from vanguards and not have to worry about prepping for all. Now, it's pretty difficult though to try to do one brew vanguard. However, I use all the tricks in the book to make it happen. So a lot of it comes down to knowing the safe spots. So I utilize all the different safe spots that I knew to avoid taking damage, especially from the melee and the ranger. The major is the most tricky one because you really can't safe spot it. Because once you attack it, it will be able to attack you no matter what. And the only way to really stop it from attacking you is either to dance under it, which isn't really reliable because sometimes you can aggro the other vanguards, or you could do what I did in this video and go all the way to the back of the entrance and hide from the mage vanguards. So when I'm done dealing damage to the mage vanguard and I don't really have anything else to fight, I just go all the way back to the entrance and hide from it until they shuffle positions. This is a really good strategy when you are in a tight situation with very little food. I would highly recommend this. Come on. Come on. There we go. That. Oh my god, another purple. What the f***? That's crazy, boys. Holy shit. What's my KC right now? Five? That's crazy, dude. I've gotten two purples and five KC, dude. Alright, let's just open it up, man. Here we go. Oh, a twisted buckler. Okay, I'll fucking take that. Oh, there's no restrictions for the buckler, but... I don't really exactly know what I can use it for. Oh, wyverns, dude. I can use that shit for wyverns. That's actually pretty nice. Look at that. 200 plus range bonus, man. That's awesome. Wow, that's 13 range accuracy higher. That's crazy. This is actually a best assault item right here. Best assault range accuracy shield, if you guys didn't know. Yeah, people don't often use crossbows anymore, so you, you don't really see this used as much. But when you do use it, though, it's so nice. Oh man, that's gonna definitely speed up some wyvern kills, I suppose. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Can't wait to check it out at uh, some God Wars, though, when we go for some upgrades in the future, too. But the, this thing's gonna be super useful at Saren and Armadil, too. So this raid layout is probably one of the best no prep raids I can get with very high chance of no prepping. Because Vanguards and Vespila all give me really good brews, I'm probably expecting at least 5 to 6 brews from this raid. Now, it's also really good for points because Agility Room and Crabs are fast skilling rooms as well. So yeah, this is a really good balance of no prep and points and time. Hopefully I should be okay. We'll see. Hit the goddamn boss. Please. Please? So close. Yes! Oh my god. Oh god damn, that was stressful. Still managed to do it though. God damn, that was close. Alright, give me a tablet. Come on, please. No tablet, dude. I need a tablet. Whoa, dude. This is actually pretty nice. I mean, Ice Demon. But it's uh, double rope and there is a shit ton of points in here. This raid isn't necessarily worth doing because it's so long and I probably have to prep. But this is a really fun raid because... Two rope rooms is basically 8,000 points. That's like 7,000 more points than what I would get normally. I'm expecting at least 38,000 points this raid, which is at least an extra percent more chance of getting a drop. So I'm just going to have to do this one for the funsies. Oh, that was a pretty tough one, not going to lie. It was like an extended raid. What we get? Diamonds and some coal. Hell yeah, dude. Easy at skilling right here. Got him. Ah, uh, we didn't get anything. But, 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 we can get a teleport tablet? Nani? Oh, I did it! Yes! Nice, I got the teleport tablet. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Okay, that's awesome, because getting here is a little bit annoying without this Eric's talisman, so... Alright, awesome. Now I can just teleport here whenever the hell I want. That's awesome. There we go, 85 farming. Now I can access farming guild and grow torstils and uh, access celestial trees there you go that's probably the last major farming level just because every other level is essentially just to improve my farming efficiency in terms of herbs and stuff and uh, maybe i can get a bit more from higher level contracts so 
Occasionally, I'll be getting some fletching levels just because I'm going to use a ton of darts at raids and uh, some other PVM when I'm upgrading my gear a bit more. Surprise! Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I don't understand, dude. This is crazy. Holy shit, dude. I just got another purple. I'm, I'm so confused, bro. This is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's raid number 10. Yeah, this is raid number 10. Fuck oh, off, dude. Yo, chill, cool. That's absolutely ridiculous. Here we go, guys. What do we get here? Oh, Arcane Prayer Scroll. Let's go. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, man. That makes me want to get 50 raids done so fast. So having Augury is going to be amazing because as far as I know, Fespila could be so much nicer like in terms of uh, me not splashing so much and also the Ohm Hand as well on the Mage side. I splash a lot, so yeah, having Augury would be insanely good for that. There is so many useful applications for Augury at raids and beyond, and I'm going to cover it in depth when I actually have it unlocked. So Prayer Scrolls are locked behind 50 raid KC a pop, so that means I have to do 40 more raids with Mystic Might and just suffer the consequences until then, but that will motivate me more to actually get these next 50 raids. I cannot wait to unlock this. Alright, this is third day, going for our 12 KC and maybe for a few more KC after this. A majority of good raids are typically done fast because of no prepping, but there are some raid layouts that are just so fast it doesn't matter if you prep. So this is one of those layouts that I found. It is 4 boss, 2 skilling, and they're all extremely fast to do. Mutadial, Shaman, Skeletons, Mining Room, and for skilling we have Crabs and Agility room they're all done super fast so even if i spend a few minutes to prep it's still going to be a nice raid another change that they did to tecton was to make it more lenient for him to stay instead of running away from the envo when you weren't next to the boss at the wrong time so say i'm flinching and i miss time to flinch and i'm not next to the boss when i'm supposed to be i get away with it at least one time as long as i go back into the right rhythm after that mistake it'll still stay the normal amount tour prayer scroll yet no, nope. emeralds and diamonds? Hell yeah, that's so much experience. Alright, I think it's time to start doing some burr houses. Using brews at a pretty decent pace now. Luckily, I got at least you burr houses. Maybe I can get like magic ones or something later on. As we passively level up some more stuff. Ooh, nice. Just got 69 wood cutting off of uh, Ice Demon Room. Eh? First level of rates right there. I got this in the bag. Yes, that was great. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, the streak isn't over yet, man. Alright, so you just gotta do some scuff-ass Ice Demon raids to get what you want. You know what I'm saying? To get those purples, man. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> yeah, another Arcane Prayer Scroll. Okay. No complaints here. Okay, give me that Arcane Prayer Scroll. Nice. Once I unlock one of them, I can unlock all of them though, so... There, there you go. Our first placeholder uh, drop right here. Damn, a bomb? Hmm... What? Oh my god, I just had to take that. Holy shit! I didn't even mean to do that, but I had to. Alright guys. This ends all the boosting for smithing for a while. Now I can make the adamant arches without having to boost, but at what cost? Yeah, um, so I pretty much don't have to use mythal darts anymore. I just have 7,000. These were obviously designed for the Warhammer grind, but that's over with, so... I had about, looks like 2.5k addy bars, so yeah, I'm just gonna turn these onto darts. These are basically my main dart use for honestly anything. I'm gonna be using it for everything, so it's a good upgrade though, you know, a bit more accuracy and at least one more damage. Which the bullpipe will make great use of that. <laughs>